Welcome back, and it is good to be back. Uh, the media scrutiny around this morning presenter Philip Schofield has been relentless since he stepped down more than two weeks ago. In sit-down interviews with The Sun and the BBC, he talked about losing everything after admitting an affair with a young male colleague. I understand how Caroline Flack felt last week if my daughters hadn't been there. I wouldn't be here. Who knew on the team? Nobody. Well, today, the key member of his team, of course, Holly Willoughby, his co-host, returned to this morning, saying she feels shaken, troubled and let down. I imagine that you might have been feeling a lot like I have. Shaken, troubled, let down, worried for the well-being of people on all sides of what's been going on and full of questions. You, me, and all of us at this morning gave our love and support to someone who was not telling the truth, who acted in a way that they themselves felt that they had to resign from ITV and step down from a career that they loved. That is a lot to process. Well, we all know about stepping down from jobs we love at ITV, but there are big questions left to answer over this scandal. Or is it time to say enough is enough. Joining me to discuss all this is journalist and author Jenny Kleeman, Talk TV's Richard Tice, and Rosanna Lockwood, my, my stand in. <laughs> <laughs> but not for long. Like all stand in, she's plotting and planning to seize the big chair. Um, all right. No comment. Um, <laughs> well, if you're not, you should be. Um, Rosanna, mm. what's your take on all this? I mean, like, I've been off for a week reading about it, obviously, while lying on a sunbed. And it just reached a crescendo after Schofield gave these interviews. Where I looked at, I've known him a long time, 35 years. I wrote a biography of Philip Schofield, literally, in the 90s. Um, and I looked at the guy and I thought, you are completely broken. Yeah. I uh, and, yeah. and when someone is in that condition, um, even though I felt that his comparison to Caroline Flack was clumsy and, and he probably shouldn't have said that, he probably meant it. He probably did feel that he was genuinely... What's left? I may as well kill myself. What do you think of the whole thing? Where are we now with this story? I mean, the question that you lined us up with was, should we still care about it? Is it too far now? I'd say it was too far a week ago. I was saying this when I sat in your chair this time last week. Why? Why do the public care about this? I don't really give two hoots about it. It's a television show. Perhaps a bit reductive. I know it's representative of other issues in society. I know people are interested, but sometimes what's in the interest of the public isn't what's in the public interest. Richard. Uh, for me, Piers, actually, he probably was right to give that interview because it highlighted to everybody just how he was feeling. And I think that was the moment at which actually people stopped attacking him and focused on what I, I think is the right thing to focus on, which is the appalling, incompetent leadership mm. and management of ITV, which is actually a seriously important company well, look, the and one brand thing, within the UK. The one thing I know for sure, a lot of people at ITV knew about the rumours about this relationship. I mean, everybody knew at ITV, right? Let's be crystal clear. That building was a buzz with this for about three years, because three years ago, the National TV Awards in the ITV box, the young man concerned in this story uh, confessed his undying love for Philip Schofield. Everybody knew that. In which so this idea that the whole management are basically going, we didn't know anything, come on. There we um, are. That, so that, that, that proves my point. That I, mean, I know is not true. I mean, she has presided over an absolutely catastrophic performance of this company. The shares are down 60%, the dividends down 40%. She's being summoned to the select committee. Mm. And yet the non-exec directors, they're saying nothing. The company has said nothing at the corporate level and, you know, about this. And Dame Carolyn, uh, God bless her, she was the CEO when I left Good Morning Britain. And they put me in a position where I had to either apologise for disbelieving Princess Pinocchio or I had to leave immediately. There was no inquiry for me. It was just like, <laughs> you either now publicly apologise for disbelieving Meghan Markle's lies, as it turned out, or you have to leave immediately. So I took the leaving immediately option. Uh, but what's fascinating is two days after that, after I'd left, uh, the Telegraph newspaper runs a story that says that Meghan Markle had written to Dame Carolyn on the Monday night before I left on the Tuesday, demanding my head on a plate. Nobody's thought to mention that to me. And had they had done, I wouldn't have been so hasty in leaving. I would have said, I'm not leaving because some princess tells you to make me leave, right? So now, 
to bring it up to full speed now, the same Dame Carolyn McCall has repeatedly said in public that it had no bearing on the decision to force me out. That is a lie. If you're watching Dame Carolyn, that's a lie. You know it's a lie. I know it's a lie. I don't want an ongoing fight with ITV. I had a great time at ITV, although I didn't even get a carriage clock when I left. Not even a carriage but, clock. But, but wait, 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 15 years, not even a clock. Yeah, but what would you do, I mean, what would you do with you, a clock? Pip? Even if you work in a factory, somebody <laughs> gives you a clock, right? I didn't even get a thank you. Right? At least Philip Schofield got 30 seconds of Derma O'Leary on the Monday thanking him. I got nothing. I trebled the ratings, not even a garage club. It seems, it seems so, the management and leadership... But, he, but on a serious point, here's my... Well, it's a, it's a serious point. My point really is, my experience of ITV management from the top down is that when it suits them, they'll lie through their back teeth. Secondly, that uh, the way they handle talent is morally schizophrenic. Depending who you are and how important they think you are to the firmament at any given moment, or how important your agency is, in the case of Philip Schofield, Ant and Deck, and so on, people like that, Holly Willoughby, um, they look at all those things, they make moral judgments based on that kind of stuff. That's where they lose me. It's not consistent. There's it's no consistency. Meritocratic. Well, right. The, the thing is, that will all come out because there's going to be an inquiry. Yeah. And I think that's a really good thing that there is going to be an inquiry. I think if this had happened on the BBC, they would have had to have called an inquiry a long time earlier. I do think, though, that there is a there has been a feeding frenzy, uh, which has been spurred by some people who have a personal beef or maybe jealousy of both Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield that has allowed this story to have a momentum to go on and on in a relentless way that perhaps it doesn't necessarily... Well, again, look, Philip Schofield made quite a lot of enemies. It's not a secret. Yeah. I know quite a few people, well, mutual friends who can't stand him, right? And they really can't stand him. It's, and they made no secret of it. Amanda Holden, Eamon Holmes, people like that. They can't stand the guy, right? Um, so that was not a secret. Uh, but some I wrote a piece... People are chalk and cheese, though, Piers, as you know very well. You know, like, some people... Yeah, I prefer to be a pleasant surprise and a bitter disappointment. <laughs> my, my argument about the ITV daytime firmament <laughs> was that so many of them were just total fakes. I wrote this piece for The Sun uh, when this first broke ten days ago, that the whole thing is basically fake, right? They're not real people, a lot of them. So they say to your face, I love you, I love what you do, you're so fabulous, Piers, and then behind your back you hear but in almost which... immediately that they despise you and can't wait to get your job. It's like isn't the whole edifice like is fake. Isn't, isn't a lot of broadcasting like yes, that? Yes, it is. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, it is, yeah, so, it is. And yeah. it's a lot of bosses telling you you're wonderful, you're wonderful, Daytime you're wonderful, TV seems you're to have fired. a particular but in which case, about you, it. You normalise lying, and that seems yeah. to be what's mm. happened here is that the lies went on and on. You know, if, you, if something is fake, it's essentially a lie. Mm. And that's gone throughout the whole organisation. Can Holly really not have known? Well, it's interesting, it, I, mean, her speech, I mean, her speech today reminded me... We've got a bit of it here, I think. Let's have Holly again, yeah. I imagine that you might have been feeling a lot like I have. Shaken, troubled, let down, worried for the well-being of people on all sides of what's been going on. I knew what it reminded me of. It was this. Mitch Kessler, my co-host and partner of 15 years, was fired today for sexual misconduct. All right, stay strong. First and foremost, I want to offer our Keep sympathy and support to the women. Holy we are God. devastated that this happened on our watch, and our hearts are with you. And to you at home, I understand how you must be feeling, because I and the whole team here at The Morning Show are feeling the same way. Shock, disappointment, disbelief. She's throwing me under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. apart from the white dress, which was a good touch, the angelic look. Uh, look, I, I like Holly Willoughby. She's a good friend of mine. I've known Phyllis Gove for a long time, right? Um, I like Holly, and I don't. She's in an impossible position. Yeah. Yeah, right, she had to come. She, she, she had do? to come back contractually and do and do what yeah. she did. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, again, I wrote in this piece like that. The, the, the speed with which people go from heroes in this game, right, where charities are falling over themselves to use them, to, to their friend, people they think are their friends at work. Let me. Here's a message: They're not in most cases. In most cases, they will chuck you under a bus and into a grave as soon as look at you while simultaneously ringing the bosses trying to get your job, right? It's just what the nature of the beast is. It's ruthless, it's horrible, and we've seen it laid bare at its worst. But, Rosanna, my question, mm -hmm. I guess, we started with this, haven't we? 
at some point you've got to you've got to move on from this mm. unless something comes out unless the the young man concerned in this story that Felix Gove had the affair with. As he comes out and contradicts Felix Gove's version of events, or somebody else comes out with new revelations, what else do people want? Felix Gofield is a broken guy. Yeah. He's not going to work on television again, almost certainly. Mm. Uh, he's lost everything in his life. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what more the baying mob on Twitter want from Philip Schofield that he hasn't already lost. And that was what was so evident from that interview. He was an empty husk. And mm. I agree with you, it's clumsy, the Caroline Flack um, comparison, but I remember watching her documentary where she say she used to go home after recording her shows mm. and just read all the tweets and all the comments and feel emptier and mm. emptier. And it just reminds you that, yeah, showbiz people, presenters, they're overpaid, it's a lovely life, but they're also human. And it really does kill someone's soul to be attacked like that mercilessly day after day. But I will say this, have the ratings for this morning ever been higher? than they were this morning. I don't know, we'll find mm -hmm. out. I mean, the problem for Holly would be if they were gigantic for the first half a minute mm -hmm. and then plummet. <laughs> um, I mean, we'll see. Look, it's not funny for her. She's obviously being going through a very tight... It's tough. It's difficult. You're in an arranged marriage with these yeah. situations. Yeah, they're, they're I was in one difficult, myself. Yeah. Very suddenly, difficult you're, suddenly you're divorced, right? It's yeah. a very, you know... <laughs> Really um, hard to maintain. And when you say, what, what, what do people want? They want her destroyed. They want the show axed. Mm. And there are some people who have, you know, like proper professional beefs or who want the job and are going to keep on going as soon as, you know, when the results of this uh, in inquiry are... are and I'm not saying they're all going slightly nuts, but this was the, <laughs> the boss of this morning, uh, Martin Frizzell, uh, who's a good guy, uh, and from my experience. Uh, but this is how he reacted this morning to Sky News. Tell you what's toxic. I've always found toxic. Is aubergine. Do you like aubergine? Do you? Is there a toxic work environment? But do you like at this aubergine? Because I don't like aubergine. It's just a personal thing. Is there a toxic but work environment at this morning? <laughs> I've heard of whataboutism. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one. Well, somebody mentioned it might be an emoji reference. I don't think we really want to go there, but um, I, these situations do send everyone slightly nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, this, this probably goes quiet until the inquiry comes out. And if the inquiry finds yeah. that actually the management and the leadership and the board knew about mm. this, then I think the whole pack of cards comes down and it's a start again. You know, the hardest problem for Holly Willoughby will be who to replace him with because poor old Susanna Ray, she's been through about 15 blokes now <laughs> and none of them, none of them live up to me. And that's a heartbreaking rep... Heartbreaking moment. Hard act to follow. Um, Couldn't wait to see that, could you? Save <laughs> 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 I was trying to say that with a straight face, and you're all like, oh, really? Oh, my God. It was, it's a joke. Mind you, when one of them was Alistair Campbell, you can quite understand it. My God. <laughs> Talk about cratering the audience. Maybe um, she could, do, could she not do it... Uh, actually, she could do, she lead it and then have a sort of guest host each week? Yeah. Well, that's what she's doing, I think. Hmm. Um, anyway, look, we've got to leave it there. It's, it's a fascinating scenario. I just think probably most people in the country now, if not the wider world, have just bored with it. For They're sure. bored. They're done. Short of a new bombshell, move on. Don't we think? Yep. Yep. I think so.